Hi, Ellen Spiegel here. Thanks for tuning in. I'm here with my cat Hobbs today talking to you about authenticity. It's really important both in business and in politics to be yourself. George Santos doesn't understand it. He doesn't get it. And there's important lessons in his story and in the stories I'm going to share with you about this. We've all seen pictures of the Brooklyn Bridge. We've all seen and heard stories about how 100 years ago, people used to try to sell people the Brooklyn Bridge. They were selling shares in it and people were unwittingly buying it. They were buying public property that wasn't available for sale, getting duped. People don't like getting duped. That's why we also hear about things like snake oil salesmen and just horrible people who lie so that they can get what they want in the short term, that they can be basically committing fraud and doing bad things. Most people don't like it, don't like being duped, don't like being victimized, and they don't respond well to it. And whereas the person who's the perpetrator might be achieving some short-term gains and might be achieving their goals initially, they're not gonna have lasting success. I learned this a long time ago. And one of the things that I used as inspiration is P.T. Barnum. And yes, he used to say there's a sucker born every minute and he would bring people in, but he was selling fantasy. He was selling entertainment and he was actually delivering on that promise. He was showing people what they wanted to see. And he was very successful at that. And most of us are not P.T. Barnum. We don't have that kind of capability. We need to be ourselves. George Santos might have gotten elected by pretending to be someone other than who he is. But you know what? I'm guessing he's not going to get reelected even if he's able to serve out his full term. So in life, you need to be yourself. You need to be authentic. Years ago, I took a job at a digital streaming service. It was a, a pioneer in the field. It was a company called EntertainNet. I was the vice president of sales and marketing. It was in Hollywood. And I was nervous about working in Hollywood because of all of the people who were very fashionable and slick and, you know, had that perfect Hollywood persona. And if you haven't figured out by now, I'm not slick. <laughs> and, and I'm just me. What you see is what you get. And I was getting ready for a meeting with someone who was very much in the Hollywood scene. And when he set up the meeting, he wanted to have the meeting at the Hollywood Athletic Club. At the time, I was really overweight. Um, and I just looked at him and I said, do I look like the kind of person who ever steps foot in an athletic club? And he started laughing and he said, you know, it's not a gym. I said, really? It's not a gym? And he said, no, it's a venue. And, you know, I was like, oh, a venue. Okay. So I go to this meeting at the venue and we're sitting at a table. He's looking around. I'm looking around, checking out who's there. And at one point I just said to him, and it was pretty early on, I said, you know, I'm not cool. I don't do cool. I'll, I've never been cool. I'll never be cool. So I'm sorry, because you know what? In my mind, there is nothing in the world worse than somebody who is not cool and tries to be cool because then that's just horrible. So I was like, let me dispel any thoughts that he might have um, that I was one of those people. And he looked at me as I'm telling him this and he looked furtively around the, the restaurant and he didn't see anyone he knew, which was a very good thing. And he leaned across the table and he looked at me and he said, so does that mean I can be myself? And I said, yes, please, please be yourself. And all of a sudden he relaxed. And because he relaxed, because I was myself and he was able to be his self, we bonded and we were able to conduct our business in a really short time frame. And it took much less time than anything would have taken if we had been both maintaining these phony personas, trying to outcool or outdo the other one. And it taught me that really valuable lesson that I just need to be myself and I need to lay my cards on the table. 
I need to be a straight shooter. And I've always been a straight shooter, but this told me that even in Hollywood, I could be a straight shooter and be successful. In my next video, I'm gonna talk about authenticity and tell you the story of my very first political campaign and how I used authenticity to win. And to win as a Democrat in a Republican district, as the first Democrat in 20 years to win that seat and the first Democratic woman ever. I couldn't have done it if I wasn't myself. I couldn't have done it if I wasn't authentic. So please stay tuned and check on in. In the meantime, thanks for coming. See you next time. Bye.